Hello YouTube, it has been a while since I've done an update, but I thought I'd give you a heads up on what's going on in the shop. Um, today I am going to be showing you how it is possible to control a variable nozzle turbocharger without having to use fancy electronics. It is actually very simple and I've learned to do this just through trial and error um, and a few blown wastegate actuators. So, first things first, this turbo is, I'll show you what I'm working on still, this is the 92 Metro getting a full Suzuki GTI conversion. We were going to use compound turbos on here. For size and simplicity sake, honestly, this is a GT2256V, um, which is capable of three and a half bar. Um, so we're going to be operating this in three different ranges, a 10, 20, and a 30 PSI mode. Um, what I have done to it, unhook this, is adapt it to a T3 flange. Um, a lot of metal work, a lot of grinding, a lot of, uh, um, just a lot of good work on there. So it almost looks like it came that way from the factory. Um, there used to be flanges right here about an inch away. So it's all ported. Um, beautiful unit. Absolutely loved this. We used it on the rocket at 10 pounds and it screamed. So I can't wait to see what it sounds like now. So getting back to the actuator. Usually these are these come off of the uh, 2.7 Mercedes diesels that are on the Sprinter vans. Um, that's just a cover to keep dust and stuff out. Um, so a problem with variable control is you either have the veins all the way open or the veins all the way closed. Now, right now at this position right here, the veins are in the closed position or very close to it. I've actually adjusted it. Um, that way it's not completely slammed shut, giving you too much back pressure as soon as the, the ring closes down. There's a concentric in here that turns. So, how do we control it, okay, without fancy electronics? Um, just to kind of give you a background on that, Garrett years ago used this little gem right here. This is a VNT25. This was used on some very special Fords. Um, and they have this little wastegate right here. Well, I looked at it and I thought, hmm, you got boost on one side, vacuum on the other. The thing is they used a silicone seal right here, which prevented the boost pressure from leaking out. These, you couldn't find those again if you wanted to. This one unfortunately had an oil leak in it. No rebuilder would touch it because it's a variable, has something to do with their contract, whatever. VNT22s are a dime a dozen. Um, but when you look at most wastegates, Got a pile of them here, more down there. Um, most wastegates are boost only. There's a diaphragm midline here, boost goes in here, pushes the actuator one direction. Same thing here, this is a standard Garrett unit. Um, yeah, they're pretty much all the same. So if you were to put a, um, a vacuum nipple right here, anything would just leak right out the bottom. So, how did we solve this? On the rocket project, let's see if I still have it up here. We tried and successfully made an actuator. Um, this is from a Volvo, I believe 900, um, one of the old T3s. So the way this worked was there was the boost pressure up top and the vacuum down here. Of course it did leak vac, but not enough that it didn't impede um, opening the actuator veins because it's a very light spring in here. Now, the problem with that was, it would put the wastegate on the bottom, or the actuator. I gotta quit calling it a wastegate, it's not. Um, in this application, I need this on top. So, what I did was, I got myself a OEM um, vein actuator, vacuum on top, boost here. There is a nipple that was welded onto here, and to insulate it, all I did was use um, of course I thought I had an extra one up here, I guess I don't. Anyway, it's a real simple, you can get these at Lowe's, about a dollar. It is a rubber washer, very thick, okay? That is just sandwiched in between here. So that gives you a perfect seal on the, sh the shaft right here. So to show you exactly how the veins work in operation, I'm gonna try to set the phone down. Um, I have a vacuum source right here. This is an old, old vacuum pump, medical use. But mind you, the veins are closed right now, so when you're cruising down the highway, you don't want all that back pressure on the system. So, I'm gonna turn it on. Okay, 
So right now the vanes are closed. We're going to apply vacuum and the vanes pull open. And of course as boost changes, open, closed, open, closed. It's going to be constantly adjusting based off of your throttle position. So right here you're at about 20 vacuum, so that's basically you know, just cruising down the road, usually about maybe 15, somewhere in here. So you can kind of see the veins will start moving back and forth. And of course, once you get down into maybe about 10, that's when the turbo really starts spooling up, this closes. But that's only half the equation. How do you control it from here? The, 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 the part of the variable nozzle is you're able to regulate this still with a boost controller through this side. Now we're going to have to set this here so I can use my air nozzle. I'm sorry in advance if the camera drops, which it probably will. Okay, so you just put a little pressure on it. So the boost pressure, the, okay, so the vanes are closed, the turbo's spooling up, the boost gets to where it needs to be, the vanes start opening up. And you can see it's very, very responsive to the, uh, the boost pressure and it will hold that and you hear a little bit of a leak that's okay that we don't want the, the diaphragm inside the gate to blow so that's this in a nutshell very simple you can pick these up for maybe 30 bucks on eBay it doesn't have to be a genuine Garrett unit this was just a, um, a Chinese special knockoff it works for me um, fabricated the little bracket mount so you can use these on almost any gas operation. It does not have to be a diesel. Um, it's a fantastic turbo. But I hope you enjoy. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask.